In this video, we're going to focus on battery capacity. Perhaps you've seen the units amps, amps times hours, milliamps times hours, or watts times hours. Now, what do these units represent? We're going to talk about that in this video. So let's start with amps. Amps is the unit of current, which is represented by the symbol I. Amps is short for, you could just write A to represent amps. But now what about amps times hours? We need to talk about Q. Q represents the electric charge and it's equal to the current multiplied by the time. The current is measured in amps. The time is measured in seconds, but it could be measured in minutes or hours. So when you multiply amps times hours, it really is a unit of charge capacity. So it tells you how much electric charge is stored in the battery. So let's say if a battery has a charge capacity of 10 amp hours, what does that mean? It means the battery can deliver one amp for 10 hours, or it could deliver two amps for five hours, two times five is 10, or it could deliver 10 amps for one hour. Now some batteries can't deliver high currents. There's a limitation due to the internal resistance inside of a battery. But ideally speaking, this is what it would equate to. Now, what about the next unit? Milliamp hours. What does that mean? We know that one amp is equal to a thousand milliamps. So one amp hour is equal to a thousand milliamp hours. So both of these units represent charge capacity because you're multiplying the current in amps or milliamps times the time in hours. So that's another unit for charge capacity. Now the last one, the watt hour, that one is a little different. Energy is equal to power multiplied by time. Power, electric power, is voltage times current. So let's talk about how the units work. One volt is equal to one joule per one column of charge. And one column is equal to one amp times one second. Columned is the unit of charge. Amps is the unit of current and seconds is the unit of time. So charge is current times time. So I'm going to replace one column with one amp times one second because they equal each other. So multiplying that by the current in amps times the time in seconds, the unit that's going to remain here is the unit joules, which is a unit of energy. So we can see why this formula makes sense. Energy is voltage times current times time. Now, voltage times current. We have voltage is in volts, current is in amps, time is in seconds. We know voltage times current is power, and power is measured in watts. Time, in this case, we could use seconds or hours. So a watt times an hour is basically a unit of energy. So here's what you need to know. Amps is a unit of current. Amp hours and milliamp hours is a unit of charge capacity. Watt hours is a unit of energy capacity. So if you want to know how much energy is stored in a battery, you need to look at the value associated with the unit watt hours. Whereas if you want to know how much charge is stored in the battery, you need to look at the number associated with amp hours or milliamp hours. So that's the difference between the two. Watt hours is a measure of energy capacity. Amp hours is a measure of charge capacity. Now let's talk about the discharge curve of batteries. We're going to put power on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. 
Some batteries will have a discharge curve that looks something like this. Now to calculate the energy stored in this battery, you need to calculate the area under the curve. You could use calculus to do that, but if you want to estimate it, we could use this formula because the shape of this graph is almost rectangular. So we can get a good approximation of the area under the curve. Some batteries will have a discharge curve that looks something like this. In this case, we could also use the shape of a rectangle to estimate the area under the curve. So let's say if this is the maximum voltage, which we can calculate the maximum power. Power is voltage times current. And if we know the nominal voltage, we can draw a rectangle that will approximate the area under the curve. Now granted, we have a portion of the area that's outside of the rectangle, and that's going to be compensated by the part of the rectangle that is above the curve. So those two areas will cancel out. So once again, we could use this formula to approximate the area under the curve. That'll give me the area that of the rectangle highlighted in red but that should approximate the total area under the curve. In the case of a supercapacitor, the discharge graph looks something like this. Notice that we have the shape of a triangle. The area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So in this case, the area under the curve of a PT graph will be 1 half PT. Power is voltage times current, and charge is current multiplied by time. So this gives us the energy capacity of a capacitor, which is 1 half QV. It's due to the fact that the shape of the graph looks like a triangle. So that's how you can really calculate the energy capacity of a battery or even a capacitor is by calculating the area under the curve of a PT graph. Now we're going to work on some problems, but there's something I do want to mention. Regarding batteries, let's say this is a voltage time graph. The battery's voltage is not constant when it's being used in a circuit. Let's say if we have a 1.5 volt AA battery. The actual voltage when it's charged up to its max might be 1.8. That might be the maximum voltage. Its usable voltage might be 1.5. So it might spend, well, chances are it's going to spend most of its time at that voltage. But at some point, the voltage will begin to drop when the battery has used up most of its energy. So for such batteries, we're going to use this formula to calculate the energy stored in the battery, as opposed to this one. Now the voltage that will be given will be the nominal voltage rather than the maximum voltage, so that we can approximate the area under the curve using this formula. So I just want to mention that, but keep in mind that if you really want to calculate the exact energy stored in a capacitor, you need to find the area under the curve. But for the problems that we're going to talk about shortly, we're just going to approximate those values using that formula. Now let's work on some problems. A 12 volt battery has a charge capacity of 30 amp hours. How long can this battery deliver an average current of 5 amps? So we know that charge is equal to current multiplied by time. So we have the charge in amp hours. The current is 5 amps, and we're looking to calculate the time in hours. So dividing both sides by 5 amps, we're going to get 30 divided by 5 is 6, and the unit amps cancel. So we're going to get 6 hours. So that's the answer for part A. Part B, what is the energy capacity of this battery in watt hours? Energy is equal to power multiplied by time. 
it's also equal to voltage times current times time. Now notice that current times time is here. So we could say that the energy stored or the energy capacity is Q, the charge capacity times V, replacing IT with Q. So this is the formula we want to use. So we have the charge capacity in amp hours. So that is 30 amp hours, that's Q. And the voltage is 12 volts. So when you multiply amps by volts, that's what, that will give you watt. So one watt is equal to one volt times one amp. So the answer is gonna be 30 times 12, which will give us 360 watt hours. So that's how you can get the energy capacity from the charge capacity. Now let's move on to number two. A six volt battery has an energy capacity of 300 watt hours. What is the charge capacity of this battery? So based on the last problem, we know that the energy capacity is equal to the charge capacity times the voltage. So we have an energy capacity of 300 watt hours. And we have a six volt battery. So what's Q? Now recall that, as we mentioned before, power is voltage times current. Power is measured in watts. Voltage is in volts. Current is in amps. So as I mentioned in the last problem, one watt is one volt times one amp. So I'm going to replace watts with volts times amps. And then we have H. So now I'm going to divide both sides by 6 volts. So the unit volt cancel, and we're given the units in charge capacity, which is amp hours. So we have 300 divided by 6. 30 divided by 6 is 5. Add the 0, we get 50. So the charge capacity is 50 amp hours in this example problem. Now let's move on to part B. What is the average current that this battery can deliver if it's used continuously for 25 hours? Charge is current multiplied by time. So we have a charge of 50 amp hours and this battery will be used for 25 hours. But let's write the units. So it's 50 amp hours equals I times a time of 25 hours. Dividing both sides by 25 hours, we can see the unit hours cancel. 25, I mean 50 divided by 25 is 2. So we're left with the unit amps. So we get an average current of 2 amps for that problem. Now let's move on to the last problem. A 1.2 volt nickel metal hydride battery has a charge capacity of 3000 milliamp hours. The battery is connected to a device with a load resistance of 200 ohms. How much current is flowing in the circuit? So let's draw a picture. So let's say this is the battery and we're just going to use a resistor to represent the device. So current is going to flow in this direction, that is conventional current. Electron flow is in the opposite direction. To find a current in a circuit, we could use Ohm's law. So the voltage is 1.2 volts. The current we're looking for, and the resistance is 200 ohms. So the current's going to be 1.2 divided by 200. And so that's going to be 0 0.006 amps. Now let's get that in milliamps. So let's convert it. One amp is equal to 1000 milliamps. So we set up the conversion factor in such a way that the unit amps cancel. And I put R, but this should be I since we're dealing with current. 0 0.006 times 1000 gives us a current of six milliamps.
So now that we have the current, we can move on to part B. Estimate how long this battery can sustain this current. So we could use charge capacity is equal to current multiplied by time. We're looking for time. So time is going to be the charge capacity divided by the current. The charge capacity is 3000 milliamp hours. The current is 6 milliamps. Well, we know 30 divided by 6 is 5. 300 divided by 6 is 50. So 3000 divided by 6 must be 500. Canceling the unit milliamps, we get 500 hours. So that's an estimation of how long this battery can sustain this current based on this charge capacity. Now let's focus on the last part, part C. What is the energy capacity of this battery? Energy capacity, as was mentioned before, is equal to charge capacity times voltage. So we have a charge capacity of 3000 milliamp hours, but let's convert that to amp hours. So 1000 milliamps is equal to one amp. So the unit milliamps will cancel. 3000 divided by 1000 is three. So we get three amp hours. That's equal to 3000 milliamp hours. So that's the charge capacity. So we got three amp hours multiplied by a voltage of 1.2 volts. So three times 1.2 is 3.6. So the energy capacity is gonna be 3.6 watt hours. So remember, one volt times one amp is one watt. So we can replace amp times volts with watts. So that's our answer for part C, it's 3.6 watt hours. So now you know how to determine the energy capacity of a battery as well as the charge capacity of a battery. And now you understand how they're related. So just to review, here are some formulas. Ohm's law, we have voltage equals current times resistance. Power is voltage times current. Charge is current times time. And for batteries, you'll see the unit amp hours. Energy capacity is equal to Q times V. In this case, you can get the unit watt hours. And I think that's basically it. That's all of the formulas that we went over. And we also said that energy is power multiplied by time. And power is voltage times current. So energy is voltage times current multiplied by time. So that's basically it. Thanks for watching.